Hello. Today we're going to talk about the other half of the conditional formatting button. So I covered the basics of this, or I started at some point in a previous video, and this is the second video on the subject. In the previous video, which you might want to check out, I talked about highlight cell rules and top bottom. In this video, we're going to talk about data bars, color scales, icon sets, as well as a little bit about managing those rules. So these are your more mathematical ones, and in my opinion, the more difficult ones to apply. Uh, and in this video, we're going to look at these, which is just, you know, uh, basically putting some colors or graphics in the columns to make them stand out, certain values. On that note, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to apply the red, uh, the green, yellow, red conditional format to the age column. So this is a color scale. And that's really the way I probably should have written that. So here's the A. So what you want to do when you're applying conditional formatting is you want to select the range first. So I do that. Control shift down arrow. Again, that's the kind of thing I covered in my previous video. Then I'm heading into conditional formatting, and it's a color scale that we're talking about. And that one's called green, yellow, red. And that one's called red, yellow, green. Um, the names have to do with the colors and the schemes for applying them, but that's really something that I'm not trying to discuss right now, so I'm just going to quite simply apply that format. And you look at the range and it's really not clear what happened. You got a bunch of red and orange, and but I'll tell you what happened. You notice there's a bunch of colors here, and so the highest ones are green and the lowest ones are red, and everything else is just some some in between that range. And these colors are arbitrary somewhat, but they're also based on this these scales here that you choose. So I do, if I'm asking a quiz or a test question, I usually just say the first one because uh, you could just as well pick any of them. Uh, but what it does is it makes the high values stand out, low values stand out, and everything else is just in between. If I sorted it, you'd see real clearly what it was. And I will do that just for fun, just so you can see what that looks like. If I sort on that column, you'll see what it is, right? The high ones are green, the low ones are red, and everything else is somewhere in the middle. In its unsorted state, it kind of wasn't clear what was going on, but that's what's going on. So the next one, I'm going to do uh, data bars on the weight column. So I didn't, oh, blue data bars. So. I'm going to select the range, um, head on over to the Home tab, Conditional Formatting, Data Bars. So you got blue gradient, right? And you got two blue. You got two shades of blue. I'm not trying to nitpick about what one it is, but and I didn't really specify whether it was gradient or solid. You've got your choices. They have names. I'm going to do blue blue data bars, and I'll show you what that is. So that is not my favorite. I don't like uh, data bars because, it, as you see, it overlaps the data. It makes the data hard to read. However, it is cool because it basically gives you an inline bar graph. So wherever the box is, it's going to have a bar going all the way to the end. And wherever the minimum is, it's not is going to be somewhere probably about halfway. You can see there's a lower one. You can kind of see what's going on. It's a cool way to really give some quick meaning to the data. Uh, you know, a spark line would also be good for that. Uh, I, in my opinion, you just have better choices. But if you're asked to apply blue da uh, data bars, that's what you would do. And the last one here is a three arrows colored icon set to the height column. So three arrows colored. So I'm going to select the range, head into conditional formatting. Now, if it has a funny name, which is not really a color or a color scheme, it's going to be an icon set. And some of these have some pretty silly names. That's three arrows colored. I don't think that's a silly name. That's three arrows gray, that's straightforward, that's five arrows gray, that's five arrows colored. Those are the easy ones, but some of them have names like three triangles. That's not even three triangles. Uh, was, look, I, I'm, it's, maybe it's a fine name, but you know some of them are easy to identify, like three flags and three stars, but there's other ones like three symbols uncircled that you probably would just never guess, but you gotta rely on the tool tips if you don't know what you're looking for. In any case, three arrows colored. That's what that does. So notice that puts little icons in the cells. One of the things I want to give you a heads up on is sometimes when you apply an icon set, um, there won't be enough information. There won't be enough width in the cell to display the information. That's a problem that you have to fix every time. There's no valid time to have pound signs in a cell. So watch out for that when you do icon sets. Because like data bars and color scales, you know, they, they have an 
effect on the readability of the data, but they don't generate, you know, those uh, pound signs, whereas an icon set might. All right, so management of these things briefly. So if you want to clear conditional formatting, I'll show you how, you, there's a lot of ways you could do it actually. What I would do is I would select the range and under conditional formatting, you can go clear rule from the range. I could also go manage rules, which would delete the rule or very realistically, I can head over to clear and clear formats. I mean, there's a kind of a lot of ways you could do it. I'm going to do it this way, which is probably the least straightforward way to show you. I uh, cleared the conditional formatting. So now I want to edit the rule to use percentiles. So this doesn't work well. So I'm going to undo, which is bad. Undo is bad for demos because you're like, what the heck? So that step, I did it. And let's go edit that rule. So say I want to use percentiles. What in the world does that mean? Well, let's go see. So I'm gonna go manage rules. I'm gonna show you what you can do and edit that rule. So you're like, what do you mean percentiles? What, what is it based on? Well, it's based on percent. If you want that to be a percentile, you can just flip those things, right? You've got number, you've got formula, you can do, you can edit these, you can edit these, you can edit the symbols. Really everything about this can be edited from here. Uh, as you can imagine, I could go down a wormhole for every little modification of every rule that you could ever come up with. But I mean, I really couldn't do that, right? I could spend the rest of my life doing that. Uh, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm just going to show you how to access those tools. So here I, I changed the way that the rule was applied. And that was a good one because I pressed apply and you saw a few of those flip. Some of them did, some of them didn't. And uh, that is how you edit rules. So now you know what you need to know to be dangerous with conditional formatting. There's a bunch of specific applications and some more difficult things you could do, but uh, you know, getting started is the hard part, and then from there you just apply them to a variety of situations. So hopefully that helps you to better understand conditional formatting. Thanks for watching.